Hi there guys, welcome to uh, Kung Fu at Home. I'm Sifu Adelik and this is part two of the Mantis hooking block. We're going to cover how to, how to properly do this block. Um, last time we talked about how the block was not done cinematically like, like this, or it wasn't done with pokey fingers like that, but it's actually used to effectively um, to deflect something and then seize the hand at the same time. So last time we talked about curling the fingers in one at a time, and then pushing the thumb in the middle of the index finger and then bending the wrist down to get your proper hooking position like that. So that's the, the, the single hook or the double hook just like that with that hand position. We don't want to have the finger straight because straight fingers tend to get broken if they get punched or kicked or hit or in any way. So we want to curl those fingers in so they're safe from getting, from getting broken. Today we're going to talk about what happens before that though for the deflection. A lot of times the mantis hooking block is done incorrectly because it people treat it like you're, like you're catching something out of the air, right? Um, which is not really an effective way to block something. If a punch is coming at you and you just kind of try to sweep it and you catch onto it, it's still going to come at you and you're going to punch yourself in, in the head with your own hand. So you need to make sure that before you're, um, you're just hooking but you're actually deflecting whatever's coming at you first. So there's two parts that blend into one on this block. The first thing you want to do before you actually catch a punch that's coming in is you want to deflect it. So if all else fails, it's not punching you in the face. So if a punch is coming straight in, first we want to send a hand out just like that, like a knife hand, to deflect it. That's the first part. The first part is we deflect the punch. Once we've driven it off its path, which is the path to our face, then we're going to hook in to, uh, to uh, hook onto it and control it immediately after that. Now when you see it fast, it won't really be clear what you're doing. It looks like the same thing, like you're just hooking, but you're actually driving the hand out to deflect and then recoiling in. So you want to start studying this in two different parts. First the deflection and then the control after. And then as you get better at it, then you start blending it together. But it has to have this action first to drive the punch off its path, followed by the control. So if you want to try this now nice and slow, use your hand just like that and send your hand out just like that, like a knife. That's the first part, and then curl your fingers in like, like I showed you last time. One, two, three, push your thumb in the middle of the index finger, bend your wrist, and then drop the elbow down. Okay, try with the other hand. Send that one out, just like a knife. One, two, three, connect, drop the elbow, and then pull in, just like that. Try with the left hand again. Send that hand out straight. One, two, three, hook. Now after practice, you can do it a lot quicker. So you can deflect and then hook right away a lot quicker, and it's a quick way to uh, to seize an attack and um, without getting too committed to it, without having someone be able, to, be able to lock your hand because you're still pulling on them really quick for the split second needs to, uh, that you need to, to pull their attack out of the way and then counter, but you're not getting over committed to where they can use that joint lock against you in some kind of a wrist lock. The third part of the mantis hooking block, which is also, uh, it was very important but often overlooked because people are focusing on the hand and they're not focusing on the forearm or the bicep, which are pretty much just as important. When you, when you see a praying mantis, when you see it hook something, it doesn't just have hooks on this part of the hand, it's got little jabbies all the way down here as well because it controls in the forearm. The top part of the hand pulls in and controls and pinches its prey in between this part and this part here as well. So we don't want to focus just on what the hands are doing here, we've got to look what the forearm is doing as well. And what that means is that sometimes in, in, uh, in different uh, training styles that are focused more on, on the, the look of the hook rather than the actual application, they might aim for something a little more aesthetically pleasing, like a double hook that will look kind of like this when the arms are, uh, the arms are stretched out which is not really as effective because then you're not using this. When you're deflecting something, and you're doing this block right, like I said last time, you deflect and then you hook, but there's another part here where the forearm and the, and the punch actually gets caught in between this point here and this point right here. And if you don't have that right angle, that's not going to happen. If your angle is kind of lazy like this, and you're trying to block a punch, that punch is going to slip right through here where if you angle everything properly with about 45 degrees, just like that, 45 degrees in the wrist, 45 degrees in the elbow, and you hook properly, this fist right here is getting, see it's getting sandwiched in between these three fingers and the forearm right here, so it gets seized that way. So you're not just relying on the strength of the fingers to actually block, but you're relying on this angle here to pinch that hand. When you pull in with the bicep, you use that, that whole action there to pull the person towards you off balance, drop their guard, so then they're open up either the neck or the face or whatever for your for your counterattack. So keep that in mind when you practice that block. When you once you throw your block out, you hook, you pull back. You want to make sure you have tight angles in here, about 45 degrees right here, 45 degrees right here. Um, and that's going to cause that pinch and it finishes off the actual control of the block. So bottom line is when you're doing the hooking block, don't do this with the straight fingers, don't do the beaks. 
and don't let your, your angles and your elbows be lazy and outstretched like that. Because although this looks really cool, it's not actually applicable for combat. You want to have your, your, your fingers in tight and then your elbows in tight just like that. I really appreciate you guys watching this. If you want more information like this, please subscribe to my channel and I'll be sure to uh, deliver as much as I can.